Hello and welcome to the bonus video for the how to have the talk with your children challenge. So these are my two, two of my oldest children. This is Eden, who is now 16, almost 17, and Judah, who is 14, and he's the younger of the twins by a whole whopping 60 seconds. So uh, my two wonderful children have agreed to do just an informal conversational style interview about what the talk experience was like for them individually, because each of our kids, you know, have had their own experiences, their own thoughts, their own feelings about it. And we hope that this will be an encouragement to other big family Christian moms who are, you know, wrestling through how to have the talk with their firstborn children for the first time. If you're nervous about that, you're like, how's it gonna go? So I thought this might be um, helpful, a nice compliment to the five day challenge to encourage you and equip you for doing this well by the grace of God so that it's not just, you know, a grit your teeth struggle, but something that you do with confidence and clarity and, and really grow in God's grace in. So let's dive right into it. Eden and Judah, whoever wants to go first, first question is, mm -hmm. What was the talk like for you? So for me, I would have been around 11, right? Yeah, and, 11, 12. Yeah, I had been asking the, the, the big question frequently because I knew that there was an answer to the question and that you guys weren't answering. You kept on saying later. So I just annoyed you asking like twice, two, three times a day. What was that, the what, question? That, just to yeah. so to yeah. so people how, how 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 where does the baby come from? Right. And you guys had been saying we'll tell you that when you're older. So I decided to annoy you guys, <laughs> but that might not have been the best way to approach it back then, but it worked. So So when did what did so, it look like? Uh, you guys told me that dad and I would go on a walk and we he would we would talk. So okay. we went on a walk. It would have been uh, on a weekend when the weather was nice, it was the evening, and we went out and we bought ice cream, hmm. and we walked down right by the water because we live right next to the Ottawa River, mm -hmm. and he just he walked, we walked through there, and he just told me everything. What did he tell you? Like, what were the, some of the highlight pieces? Um, <laughs> that you feel comfortable saying? Like, he he just told me about. He sex told you. He told you about. He sex. told you. He told me about the sex. guy and the girl. Yep. And the intercourse, yep. and there yep. you go. And how did you feel about that once the mystery was revealed, you know, the curtain was drawn back, and you're like, oh. I was fine. I didn't think it was, like, it was definitely weird, but it wasn't, like, so weird, and I was, like, grossed up, and I wanted to barf that night or anything like that. It, it, I was I was fine with that. Okay. And then you didn't keep pestering us anymore? No. Nope. Your curiosity was, was satisfied? Did, I, now, I'm curious, did Dad ask you to keep that more private because maybe your your twin brother or your uh, we have they also have a brother 16 months younger than them so did he ask you to just kind of yes, give them did. their time he did ask me to do that he asked okay. me to just keep this to myself although i remember eating that on a dog book one time and she was like so i heard that you know this how much do you know i was like and I very t quickly told her, and then I think she was like upset that you guys had told me or something like that. <laughs> well, she was the only—I I don't even remember. Because she was no longer being, the only one. Me being too young or First younger one. than she thought, or something like that. But I remember <laughs> that, and I was like, I, "That she's the only person I told." Okay. Right. Well, I already knew. So when I, I wasn't at least I, I wasn't supposed to tell anybody, but she already knew. So sure, well, we didn't want you to go to your brothers yeah, and yeah. be the one who would have the talk with them. For yes. The first time we we wanted. You know, a parent, ideally, yeah. to be the one who would walk alongside our children into the the adult level knowledge of not just the biology, but the sacredness and the beauty. And like I've talked about this week, that, you know, the whole picture of sex, which really it comes from the picture of Christ in the church. So there's that. Eden, why don't you take a moment to tell us what the talk experience was like for you? Yeah. So mom and I, I believe we went on a drive because we were either going to like Making stuff when yeah. you were having a baby. There was a drive. <laughs> there was a drive. Yeah. And we went, and I don't remember how the conversation came up, but somehow we ended up talking about how the heck the babies were made anyway. Okay. This has been a question I've been asking since like ever because it made no sense how the baby could just magically get there. Right. Just didn't make sense. Like, why do we need dads? Why do they exist? <laughs> Seriously. If moms just have babies, like Amazonians, why? right? We Seriously. don't really need men. <laughs> um, 
And yeah, you kind of just told me, I remember you talking to, you had this big dramatic kind of lead up to it where you're just like, you're talking about how good things were and how nice things were. And I was like, I feel like this is something bad. What is going to happen? <laughs> just put a little cushion. It's really it's, it's nice like, and it feels really good. And like, it, Okay. Yeah. So there's this thing called an erection and it goes, where? What? Okay. So do you remember yeah. how you like reacted after? Like first I told you about your period. Yeah. Cause you had no clue. Yeah. Um, and then I told you about fertilization, like how, how you know, it happens. if the egg yeah. is not fertilized, okay, you're going to get a period and that's messy and told her how to deal with that. We did a whole video about that. Uh, but what about if the egg does get fertilized and how does it get fertilized? So finally the mystery was, the curtain was drawn back and I was like, I'm going to tell you something you didn't know. And then you knew. How'd you yeah. feel about it then? I'm pretty sure it was like, oh, gross. Why would, ew, no, 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 no. <laughs> Something along those lines, I think. I don't remember exactly. That was my reaction. Luke, would you go out, buddy? We're having a talk right now. Thanks. I feel like this happens in every video. Yeah, well, when you have almost 11 children, unless you lock the door yep. on even then, you know. Yep. So there's no movie on right now to keep them fascinated. So, But Dad's in charge. He's downstairs. Okay. All right, so you were a little bit kind of taken aback. You said a little grossed out. All Do right. you remember um, what you asked me? Oh, yeah. I asked exactly how how many times do you guys do that? Like I'm like counting on my fingers. Being yeah, like, she counted how many, how many children we have, and she's like, "How many times have you and Dad done this? How many times do you do this?" And I was like, "I, I was like, I'm not sure if that's really necessary <laughs> for me to tell my children." I felt like that was for me still like a, a private matter between me and my husband. So I said as often as we like, you know, and segue because husbands and wives obviously can negotiate amongst themselves. That is a, a husband and wife decision. I didn't tell her. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's also, again, like I've talked about in other videos. It's an ongoing conversation. This was just the first time, like the big reveal, but it's not the last time we're going to talk about anything related to sex and life and marriage and children. And, and, you know, Within a Christian context, also some of the very sinful and selfish ways that sex is expressed in our world, especially in this time where things are hyper-sexualized culture here in the West and a lot of expressions of sexuality, um, just new ways of expressing sexuality that didn't even exist when I was, you know, 14, 16 years old, or at least weren't, weren't as um, on display the way they are right now. So there were other conversations to be had. That was just sort of like the first one. Yeah. So moving on here, I got just a couple more little questions. What was it like for you? Maybe you already touched on this, Judah, like the waiting. Because when you guys would ask at eight, at nine or at 10, you know, but how does the baby get in there? And we've, we always said, well, you know, God put the baby in there, which is theologically true. It's just not giving the mechanics of how God put the baby in there, like the biology involved. So what was the waiting like for you? Was it? Um, so I never really doubted your questions because you were my parents, obviously. And I showed God physically puts the baby. <laughs> like immaculate conception. You. Yeah, he just drops like the baby Mary. from the sky like storks <laughs> delivering the baby in a package. Uh, and then I got a little bit older. And I, there was like this biology book at like grandma's house or something. It was like had the sperm and the egg. And I was like. Women do have eggs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so then I came back and I found out that they didn't lay them. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we don't know if you lay, lay them. Uh, <laughs> okay. And I learned about the sperm. I was like, I have those. Right. And I said, but I learned that the two of them make baby. And so I was like, and I was like, so you guys, your answer to the question is, baby comes when men are go away. So I figured when they get married, it just somehow floated. <laughs> How like, does the egg and the sperm meet <laughs> like, one day, like friends on the street? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah like you said, friends on the street and bump then, into yeah, each other, yeah. float so, in the window, like until pollen. eventually I got older and I figured that that wasn't scientific. <laughs> and I started asking questions. There you go. All right, what was it like for you, Eden? For me, I was kind of like, okay, you're gonna tell me someday. I trust you're gonna tell me someday, but I don't get it. I was okay. very frustrated that I didn't get it. Yeah, um, well, you are the first one, child. <laughs> I sometimes call her Hermione. <laughs> All right, Hermione. So did you feel when the talk came for you, at least that first talk, 
was it too little was it too late or was it like it's okay this is a good time as good as any how did you feel about it uh, how did i feel about the yeah film? was it like too late i've already picked all this up like i've already heard about it there's thanks but i already know so I remember actually before we had the official talk, I had asked you that question earlier, and you like unpacked most of it, mm. not like all of it. You talked about sperms and eggs meeting, uh, and you actually did show me a biology book, but not, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand it all. Brushed mm. over my head. So then I asked it later. Um, so did you feel so like I, it was I too knew much I knew a I knew a little bit. All I need to figure out was how the two of them connected together. Right, right, yep. which was the big reveal. Yep. Okay, what about you, Eden? When the talk finally came, was um, it too much? Was it too little, too late? I think I appreciated that I was, like, 11 when it happened because afterwards I feel like would have been too late because I started hanging out a bit more, doing more social things, and you just – you kind of like hear things not like bad things but people would say stuff and honestly i didn't even know what they were talking about for the longest time mm. but that kind of just like social exposure sometimes can be negative mm. so i'm glad that mom and well, mom you talked about it um earlier rather than later okay all right so last question do you have any advice you know coming from your perspective as the receiver of the talk do you have any advice for other parents who are looking to do this for the first time, maybe feeling nervous, maybe feeling like, oh, is it too much? Am I, am I going to awaken sexual desire or, or, you know, is it too much? Is it too heavy? Sometimes parents can feel nervous like that. Um, any thoughts on that to encourage other parents? Uh, for me, from my experience, one of the things that made me feel really like relaxed and happy about that was that I was, number one, I was with my dad, not okay. with my mom. And it, there's guy and guy makes me feel relaxed and also like it was on a walk with ice cream <laughs> uh and um it was also in the evening which was just like nice because usually we don't go out in the evening right and it was cooler and it was the summertime okay. and it was nice and we didn't just talk about sex we also just had like father-son talk which i really enjoyed yeah uh, we, we joke because Judah did go through a phase for about a year where he, just the way his brain works, would just go in this like circular pattern. He'd ask one question, and before he was done asking the question, he'd be asking the next question, and the next question, and the next question, and the next question. You know, very beautiful, extroverted, artistic kind of mind. Uh, but it also became overwhelming at one point, and we actually did sometimes say to him, okay, you can ask two more questions, and then we're done for today. Because it was a lot of questions. It was almost like a growth spurt, like a like a mental growth spurt. So we wanted to honor that and at the same time still have some boundaries, right? Because we're like, okay, I, I really got to make supper right now. <laughs> we got to like go somewhere. So, I, dude, I wanted to ask you as well, like after that talk, did you feel comfortable kind of following up with your dad and, and asking him further questions on other walks or other opportunities? Did you feel like he was someone you would feel comfortable going to? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. And what about you, Eden? Any advice for other parents? Um, I think it would depend kind of like what situation your child is in. For me, I was homeschooled. So for most of my life, I hadn't really been around anywhere where, where I would have picked any of the stuff up. Mm. If, for example, a kid is in school or does a lot of social activities, you might want to bring it up even earlier, mm. though it might seem like rushed or uncomfortable. It's going to be better coming from a parent than really anywhere else I think um for me like I never really liked the idea of sex I have never felt any sexual desire ever <laughs> like, and we're like and that's normal because you're we like <laughs> she was 11 she's 16 and we reassured our children that like all things in their season right kind of like if you look at the seasons outside it's fall right now like everything has a season and god says that there's a time for everything under heaven right time to be born a time to die time to marry right there's a time to reef and harvest there's a time for those desires to awaken and having the talk with your kids isn't necessarily going to awaken this like 
insane lustful desire to seek for love and satisfaction in like the wrong places, but it'll give them a framework, a Christian framework, ideally of how to think about sex. And yeah, it is. It's years of in advance, right? Because they're nowhere near marriage and God knows if they will marry, who they will marry, when they will marry. So we reassured our kids that it's yep. okay. You're not a weirdo. If you have no desire for sex at 11, or even 16, it, all things in time. So the when you do begin to feel like maybe the more magnetic attraction to the opposite sex, and you're like, oh my gosh, what's happening? I mean, this is really annoying. Uh, you have some framework to think that through and some trusted resources to talk to you so you don't feel alone or overwhelmed or like you could only talk to your peers. But the Bible says is, by and large, the companions of fools, so they only know what they know. So though parents aren't the only people you could talk to, we we definitely encourage you as a parent to be that trusted resource to, you know, get to the front of the line. Because like I've said before, the kids are going to pick this up somewhere. So who's it going to be? And you have an opportunity. I would even say a responsibility from God to give them a beautiful Christian picture of sex and which sex within marriage and the blessing of children that flows from that, which is a picture of Christ in the church bearing good fruit, you know, until the Lord returns. So I hope this has been a blessing to you. Thank you for meeting with us. And thank you, Eden and Judah, for sharing from your lives, you know, about such a, a more sensitive topic that not all of my children would feel comfortable talking about uh, on screen at all. So <laughs> I don't think a lot, a lot of your children would feel comfortable trouble talking on stream that's all right we've got the introverts and the extroverts right so i want to say goodbye bye <laughs> bless you guys take care